So if he can point or indicate, maybe turn his head towards what, you know, what he needs help with, and then he does that, and then we go fix it, the fixing it is the consequence of him showing us what he wants fixed, and then the consequence is we fix it. Um, so we want to reinforce that communication skill where he's indicating what the problem is um, and pointing to the TV. Um, C, he screams and punches at you, so you start adjusting the TV channel. Um, the screaming and punching is the problem behavior here. The consequence would be adjusting the TV channel, so giving him what he wants. You know, he still has the, the antecedent of he doesn't like that you know, channel. Maybe it's, it's uh, Days of Our Lives and he really wants wrestling on. I, I don't know. Um, but the consequence is um, that you change the TV channel and it makes it more likely that he's going to hit and punch when he wants the channel changed again. It'd be so much better to teach him like, hey, it's better to, um, to point to get what you want and that that's going to work for you. We're going to pay attention. We're going to honor those. That's going to be the best way to get your needs met. Exactly. So uh, we want to make sure that uh, we are reinforcing appropriate behavior. So the examples we did earlier, the three we're going to do now. Um, so in the first example, the consumer uh, doesn't want to come inside. He's sitting outside on a nice day at the workshop. And so this is going to be our replacement behavior. Um, let me introduce this real quick. So this is our antecedent behavior consequence model, but this time we add in replacement behaviors. So we want the consumers to do this instead of the problem behavior to access what they want or need, which is really important. So that first example, what happened was he was sitting outside happily and you come up to him and say, it's time to come inside. That's the antecedent. The problem behavior is he starts screaming and cussing and hitting at you. So the replacement behavior that we can teach him while he does that is say, Mike, if you don't want to come inside, just, just tell me, I want to stay outside. And he communicates that. And the consequence is he gets to stay outside, yet he learns that I get to stay outside by the appropriate behavior. Um, and a, a good side note is it's not going to change right away. Behavior change takes time and it takes consistency. So don't, don't give up just because you did it one time and it didn't work. It's going to take a lot of repetition because most of the time these problem behaviors have been reinforced for days, weeks, months, or even years. So just be patient and if you feel like you need help, you can always reach out to the behavior department and we will come out and help you with that. So the second example was um, you brought food to the table the consumer, we're going to assume, doesn't like it. He started banging his um, elbow and head to the table, and he did it louder and louder until you removed it. So the antecedent was bringing the food to the table. The problem behavior was the self-injurious behavior, and the consequence was he got the food removed. So in this real example, um, this consumer can't talk. So we can't say, please take this food away. I don't want it. So we could teach him to physically push the plate away, um, which is simple enough, and he does have the um, ability to do it. So we start going through this model. He presents the problem behavior, and you say, hey, bud, if you don't want it, just push the table away. Just, just the table away. Just play. All right, let's start that over. So the second example, um, the consumer is at the table sitting, and you bring the food out to him. And so the, the antecedent is bringing the food, and the problem behavior was he's hitting his elbow and his head on the table, and the consequence was you remove the food from him. Um, so what we want to teach is a definitely a more safe way to do it, because self-injurious behavior is a real problem behavior, and we, of course, don't want anyone to hurt themselves. So the replacement behavior is he starts banging his head, his head and his elbow on the table, tell him, say, hey, if you don't want this, let's push it away. And you can prompt him gently to push the plate away, and then you automatically remove the plate out of the way. So the consequence is then, hey, if I push my plate away, I no longer need to beat myself up to get rid of this food. I can just push the plate away. So for the third example, uh, 
the consumer is sitting at the workshop with nothing to do. Um, antecedent, nothing to do, sitting, idle, problem behavior was the cussing. The consequence was getting your attention. And an important note is, for a lot of our consumers, any attention is good attention for them. They're so bored, they just want someone to say, to make them feel special or important. So get out of your mind that why would they want my attention because you know, all I do is tell them to be quiet or something along those lines. Because honestly, you're just you're giving them that attention, that's all they want. It doesn't matter if it's nice or not. So what we want to do, replacement behavior, he starts cussing at you, problem behavior. So you, you can prompt him and say, hey, if you want my attention, why don't you just ask, hey, I need help, or hey, I want to talk. And then the consequence is you walk over and you, you can praise him and say, hey, thanks for asking for my attention. What do you want? Or let's do something together. And um, once again, it's going to take time, but it can be very effective. And that can look more natural in, in real yeah. life. It could be things like, you know, teaching the person to say, hey, come here. Um, and you come over and say, hey, what's up? What's going on? You know, it can look very natural. And we're, you know, we're explaining this, um, kind of the, the reasoning and the, the scientific basis of it. But, you know, be yourselves as you do this. Um, also, there's these green arrows on here. And um, I forgot to talk about it earlier, but that consequence is reinforcing the behavior that occurs right before it. Oh, excuse me. So the top part is our problem behavior. So the problem behavior occurs, and then they get access to food, attention, or um, activities, or being left alone. That consequence strengthens this problem behavior. And if you see down here in our replacement behavior model, instead of problem behavior gets us access, we go replacement behavior goes to access. So the thing that happens right before the access is the replacement behavior. That's what gets strengthened instead of the problem behavior. Um, that history is really important of how you know how long that problem behavior has been working. Um, but people can learn to use new skills. Um, it, it just really helps us if we're consistent, um, you know, across the board with it. It'll make it go much faster. I have two ASRs to do. Uh, the first is the first ASR is Bruce is at the workshop and leaves the room without saying anything due to years of being told no he can't go right now. So we're gonna look for the replacement behavior. So right now we know the problem behavior is just leaving the room, I'm not sure where he's going. And the consequence though is he gets to go to the bathroom, um, and that's that's a problem because we we need to know where he's going at least. Um, so. Tell me which one would be the best replacement behavior. Is it A, get Bruce adult diapers so he doesn't need to leave the room? Is it B, block Bruce from leaving and tell him to wait till break time? Or is it C, prompt Bruce to tell you he's going to the bathroom and allow him to go? Answer C, we're going to let him go to the bathroom. Um, it seems like a very black and white type of answer, but these are certain issues that we run into. Uh, our replacement behavior is him asking you to go to the bathroom and we'll have to teach him how to do it but it's a much safer behavior because we do need to know where he's going and if he's at the workshop he is working so it's an appropriate behavior to say hey I'm gonna run to the bathroom real quick I'll be back. The, the second ASR is uh, Blake is bored and wants our attention on the van. Uh, which one are we going to ignore? So sometimes we need to ignore problem behavior because we've talked about in this video how when we accidentally reinforce problem behavior. So this is a really good example of accidentally reinforcing problem behavior. So if he's bored and he wants our attention on the van, he's going to A, raise his middle fingers to you in the mirror, or do we ignore Blake saying to us, hey, how are you this morning? Or do we ignore Blake saying, I need help with my seatbelt? The answer is obviously A. We need to uh, ignore Blake raising his middle fingers to us in the mirror. Uh, see it very commonly in the T-log. Somebody will cuss at staff or yell at staff. And it's not necessarily 
that they need something right away or they're in dire danger, but staff still give that problem behavior a lot of attention. And so as we talked, if we give that problem behavior attention, consequences in the future, there's more likely to do that instead of saying like, hey, I want to talk with you right now. We talk in another video about how to use neutral responding. Um, so that would be a really good time to respond neutrally to the problem behavior. And then once the client is, is engaging in some kind of appropriate behavior, then increase those interactions again and bring back the, you know, the social praise and um, give them attention at that point. Um, so you might prompt a replacement behavior um, if, you know, if that, I mean, really you could do that pretty much any time. So if somebody is flicking you off in the mirror, um, you could say something like, hey, let me know if you want to change the radio station. Um, if, if you think it's related to the music, or let me know if there's anything you need. That's a, just a general one. Um, if the person has more limited communication, then it's, it's going to go back to um, your knowledge of them and what types of things they typically like or don't like. Um, so sometimes there's some, some guesswork in there. But generally, we're trying to figure out what is it they want and how can they ask me for that thing in a more appropriate way. Right. So. That's it for replacement behaviors. Uh, remember, if you have any questions or concerns, you can always reach out to the behavior department, and we will, as quickly as possible, help you guys out. Thanks. Thank you so much.